Welcome back. So my family history has always been important to me. I'm a proud Texan and I come from a long line of other proud Texans, but I've always wanted to know more. What came before Texas? Where was my family originally before they were brought here to the U.S.? And everything in between. Ahead of this year's Grandparents Day, I was able to find out some answers to those very questions for the very first time. With the help from ancestry genealogist Nika Sewell Smith, as well as the results of my ancestry DNA test, I was able to learn about the generations that came before me. Check it out. Joining me now is Mika from Ancestry. Um, Mika, I'm so excited to get the big reveal. Um, part of the reason why I'm so excited is, you know, when you have legacy that it's hard to track because of slavery or um, they were abandoned some way, Native American as well as African ancestry, you really don't get your complete story. And I think there's power within the story. Um, so I'm so grateful for Ancestry for digging into the weeds to figure out um, how you got Lawrence Jones. So what can you tell me? Everything has been a surprise thus far. Right, I've held out, have Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that I can convince you to give me a little tips. Oh, no. Nothing. No, we had to wait for the big, <laughs> the big climactic reveal. <laughs> what do you have for me? I have a lot. Well, granted, the name of your show is Cross Country. That's right. But you are Texas through, through and, out. and through. <laughs> like, I don't think I've tried to escape the no. bounds of Texas, but you are so Texas. Yes. Um, so the first thing I'm going to share with you is your DNA results. OK. Um, and we're going to have a little conversation about this. So I'm going to share this with you. So your highest percentages are in Nigeria, Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples, along with Mali, Benin, and Togo, um, Senegal. You have some trace other regions. Are there any surprises here for you? Um, the England, North, uh, Western Europe, 5% and 6% Irish. Mm -hmm. That that caught me by surprise. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you maybe need to change the name of the sort of cross world. That's you know? right. <laughs> As opposed to cross country. I like that. I like that. We'll have, we'll have to go on the tour for this. So right. that's interesting. I, I got a little bit of everything in me. You right do, now. you do, yeah. I, well, although like the percentages that you have that go back to Africa, I mean, it's pretty large compared mm -hmm. to what we normally see. Even for me, really? I'm like 75%. You're higher than that. So wow. Yeah. So I, I guess in total, about what percentage of African am I? You're over 80. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Right. Well, I mean, in relative time, it's kind of hard for people to conceptualize that, mm -hmm. right? Because we're decently far removed in terms of time from the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. So we tend to think maybe not as high or, you know, there may be other stuff, but not you because you never left Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do love Texas. <laughs> What was the second bit of information? Oh, there, there's more than two. You're counting? <laughs> I'm counting it all. Oh, no, 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 no. So one of the other things that I wanted to show you was the DNA communities. And these mm -hmm. are incredible. They are more recent ancestry. So you're talking the last 150 to 200 years of your family history. Mm -hmm. And they're not percentages like your ethnicity. These actually drill down to geographic locations in the world, and in particular for you, within the United States. Mm -hmm. So you'll see East Texas and Oklahoma African Americans identified. Mm -hmm. As well underneath there, you'll see Waco, and you'll see- That's South where my family is. Really? Yes, they're still there. <laughs> Right, they say haven't left. Yeah, we ain't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that drills down specifically to where your specific ancestors are. How does it feel to like see that you just like basically spit in a tube and we gave you this much information? I mean, it's, it's 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 interesting because you know you, you don't think you can gather that information just from DNA, um, and it's interesting that you guys have been able to take the technology and. You know, if you go on the site, then you start to see all your relatives there as well and people that you know and some people you had no idea about. Right, right. So another thing that I was able to uncover, because mm -hmm. you, you gave me a few little requests the That's first right. time we <laughs> talked, you wanted to know specifically where in Africa your family came from. And I know you already know quite a bit about your mm -hmm. father's side, but I dug really deeply into your mother's side and wow. I was able to find an exact location in a Nambra state in Nigeria. No way. Yes way. Let's see it. I gotta know. It's your it's on your 
maternal I'm line of ma our family. Maternal and where, where, where is that exactly? It's along the Niger River. And so it's one of the states that is there. You know, you think about um, mm -hmm. states like we have, Marion mm -hmm. County. Right, right, right. That's the equivalent. And in that area, they have bronzes. Most people know about Nigerian um, bronzes. Mm -hmm. They have some that predate others in the area by centuries. So I can go back there and meet some of my relatives, essentially. Correct. Wow. And that's on my mother's side. That's on your mother's side. Everything we're going to be talking about is going to be about your mama. Right. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be proud about oh, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so I have more stuff to share. Okay. One of the things I want to also point out to you is in addition to getting the names of all eight of your great grandparents, mm -hmm. we were able to uncover 14 of your great great grandparents. Wow. 22 of your great 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 grandparents, 20 of your four times great grandparents, and six of your five times great grandparents. Wow. And these are all their names. Yeah, that's going up to great great grandparents there. That's incredible. So we know who they are. Now, I, I'm, we're, I guess which generation were the slaves? Anyone that you see that has a birth date prior to 1865 typically was enslaved. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you asked that question because there is definitely a big story that I want to share with you about that. In one of the areas that your family is from, which is Brazoria County, Texas, mm -hmm. there was a huge population of African Americans there that were brought in after the importation ban in the United States proper. In 1808, Congress said no more importation of African people. But within the area of Texas your family is from, it was neither part of Mexico and it was neither part of the United States. So it was kind of in this weird kind of leeway space mm -hmm. and people were still importing people from Africa into that area. So what that means is that you have more recent African ancestry than a lot of people do here stateside. Oh. One of those ancestors I want to show to you is a woman named Mariah Williams, who in 1910 was 105 years old. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Wow. And she was born in Africa. Whoa. So that would have been my great, how many greats? Five times. Five times great. Yes. A she lived to be 105. Yes, at least that age. Wow. Now, it's a little hard to see, but we're going to zoom in here. She's in a household with her daughter, who's named Amanda, and her son-in-law, who is named Marshall Modkins. And within this area, again, you have a lot of people who have an African birthplace. Mm -hmm. Marshall, at one point, his parents were also listed as being born in Africa as well. Wow. That's pretty incredible. 105. Okay. Okay. You That's a lot to take in. Well, let, I mean, we could sit back <laughs> for a second. No, right? no, no. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. But 105? Yeah. Wow. And, and not just, you have to also contextualize it. She's 105. She lives to see freedom. And not only that, but she survived the transatlantic slave trade. Not a lot of people survived. No. In a boat Correct. stacked on top of each other where other people were ill at the time as well, and the abuse and all that, and she still lived to be 105. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's where you come from. That's right. That's right. Um, what else? Man, I that's a lot. I got more for you. I got more for you. Look at you, you got a little I know, a display. whole collage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you talked to me about wanting to know about people who were involved in like social justice and mm -hmm. so social causes. And one of those folks I was able to identify was another five times great grandparent of yours named Talton Williams. Williams is kind of a ubiquitous mm -hmm. name in your family. And he was married to a woman named Pamelia. He was a landowner, a taxpayer. His son, your four times great grandfather named Lemon Williams is who you descend from. In 1867, just two years after slavery ended, he was a registered voter in the state of Texas. Wow. And this is the listing where we find him. He's down here towards the bottom. There it is. Not a, even when we got the right to vote, not a lot of people were bold enough to go register the vote because of what it, they had to endure to get it. And he did it anyway. He did it anyway. Wow. I'm keeping all of this. 
<laughs> not like I'm going to confiscate it all back. But okay, so a little bit of a lighter story. Your third great grandfather was named Emmanuel Lang, mm -hmm. and one of the documents that I love the most are World War II draft cards because not only do we find out things like when these folks were born, um, he was born between 1894 and 1898 in Falls County, Texas. Mm -hmm. We get to see their signature and where they worked. Wow. Can you tell me what that says? Majestic Hotel. He worked at the Majestic Hotel. Wow. And he worked at a tub within the Majestic Hotel. Think of like hot springs and people mm -hmm. going to, you know, try to get mm -hmm. healed from different ailments and stuff like that. In Falls County, Texas is known for their hot springs. Right, right. So he worked where they were basically helping people in that way. And draft cards have two sides, so we even get to see his height, his weight, his complexion, race, hair color, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff if you never potentially saw a picture of him. That's so cool. You're definitely taller. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit 5'3". Oh, right. I'm, I'm like 6'5". Right, I was about to say, I kind of put you in a little over 6'3", so mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, you're like a whole foot taller than he was. Lastly, this is an advertisement for the Majestic Hotel, so you can actually see what they were advertising to people in order to get them to come and, you know, for Emmanuel to basically soothe whatever their ailments were. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. So how were you able to do this? It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> So I learned a bunch of things about my family that I never knew before. And there was even some of it that didn't even make air. Like, for example, um, on my dad's side, Choctaw Indian, Native American. So I'm going to be trying to get my card and all that so I can register with the reservation. If you want to find out more about your own family and history, you can visit Ancestry.com to learn more. It's an interesting journey. It takes a little bit of time, obviously, for TV purposes. They were, we had multiple people working on this for months to get me as much as information, but it was truly uh, great to figure out where my family comes from and where I come from. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.